Aloha everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. It's a puffy eyed early morning y'all cause I am tired. I guess it's not that early, it's 11 o'clock, but you know, I stayed up late so. You guys have no idea how excited I am for this video and it's funny because I literally just thought of this video idea last night. It's not something I was preparing for. I was literally just working last night and I was like, hmm. It's been like a long time since I've done a Q&A video. Like a long time, bitch. I don't even, I can't, I don't even remember the last time I did a Q&A video. Like a year? Okay, so I did one two years ago. That can't be my last one. Was that my last one? Two years ago? Okay, well, regardless, it's been a long ass time. So yeah, I asked you guys some questions on Instagram last night, which if you haven't followed me on Instagram already, we are so close to 1 million followers. So close. And Instagram is where you're able to participate in my upcoming videos, whether it be Q&A videos, reactions to your skincare routines, a bunch of different things. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you're missing out, boo. But to all who did submit questions, thank you guys so much. I wish I had the option to look up how many people submitted questions. I don't think I can, but you can see all the questions just go, go on and on and on and on. And on. So Thank you to everyone who asked them. <laughs> I remember doing my first Q&A and I think I got like 20 questions and I was like, oh my God, this is like celebrity status. I'm going to be doing a personal Q&A. You guys are probably familiar with my live streams that I do every other week where I answer your guys' skincare questions and that's a really fun Q&A format. But I thought why not do a little bit more of a personal Q&A because it has been a long time. And I told you guys to go in and not hold back. So I am somewhat nervous, a little anxious, but mostly excited to answer these questions. So let's just get into it. I haven't read through any of these yet. So I'm just gonna like rapidly scroll and randomly stop and answer whichever question I think is like the most invasive. <laughs> okay, ooh, I'm so excited. Okay, let's go. Oh my God. <laughs> First kiss story. Okay, so this is from Scarlett. She asked, what's my first kiss story? So, you know, I don't, I've probably only told like maybe two people in my whole life this story. It is, oh, it's so cringe. Um, So I was in sixth grade and let me just say the school that I went to was a bit, it was a bit ratchet. And I say that because as sixth graders, 11, 12 year olds, um, everyone was doing the nasty. So many people got pregnant. There was tons of fights that broke out on campus. People were constantly trading um, addictive substances. Our teachers were having extramarital relations with other teachers. It was just like, a, yeah, it was crazy. I'm honestly surprised I survived my middle school because it was like hell, it was hell. But when I was in sixth grade, I saw that everyone was doing the nasty. And I was like, okay, I obviously don't feel attraction to girls, but I at least need to be doing something to, you know, make sure that I'm not sus. And I had a girlfriend, but by girlfriend, I mean like we would like spend a little bit more time together at school than my other classmates. And I remember I felt pressure to kiss her because everyone else was doing that shit all day long. And I'm not gonna say your name in case you're watching, but I am so sorry. <laughs> and I know that may sound shocking, but here's the reason why I consider myself a truly golden gay. Golden meaning you haven't done anything with girls. It's because it wasn't even a kiss. It was literally like a peck. I will show you with the palm of my hand exactly what it was like. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, that was it. It was like purse your lips and go in for the bullseye and then retract as immediately as possible. Honestly, I've showed more passion and love for my pillow than I did her. So I don't really consider that a kiss. Plus, I thought it was gross. It was wet and uncomfortable and not exciting. So yeah, that was my first kiss. <laughs> I'm so shocked that I'm sharing that on the internet because I literally never tell anyone that story, but you guys are lucky. It's your lucky day. Okay, this is from someone named Siri. They say, what is your worst high school memory? Hmm, my worst high school memory. I don't know, there's like so many and I don't wanna be like super dark because to be honest, there were some extremely traumatizing memories from high school that probably should be reserved for a therapist only. But I'd say just like a fun worst memory was probably when um, my parents really did not want me to read Hunger Games. Like it was all the rage when I was in high school and the first movie was going to be coming out and I wanted to read the book so badly because they just seemed so fascinating to me. My parents said no, so I went behind their back and I read it anyway. And it ended up being like my favorite series ever. But one time when I went went to the library with my mom and I was trying to like get a new book. They said that I was overdue on a bunch of book fees and they printed out an entire receipt. And I realized in that moment in front of my mom that the Hunger Games was on that receipt with an overdue amount. And I panicked and tried to throw away the receipt without my mom knowing. And she ended up finding me and was furious. And there was like a high school dance that night that I was supposed to go to and I wasn't able to go to. And I think she didn't talk to me for like a week. I don't even think she looked at me for like five days. Anyway, usual parent things. Um, I got in big trouble, but it was really funny because I was like, 
bawling my eyes out in my room, like trying to get my parents to talk to me. It was like a whole mess. But it's kind of funny because I look back and I'm just like, damn, that's so fucking dramatic over a book. I can think of so many parents that would jump for joy if they found out their kid was reading a book. <laughs> Favorite song? Ooh, that is a great question. Either Rush Over Me by Elenium Said the Sky, Seven Lions. When I tell you that song is like angelic and the perfect marriage of all of my favorite artists, I am not lying. I could bathe in that song for eternity or probably enough by Thrilogy. I found that one earlier this year and ever since it came out, I've just, I can't stop. I can't not stop listening to that song at full blast and damaging my eardrums. <laughs> I probably say those are my favorite songs simply because of like how much I treasure them. Like I know I love a song when I stop listening to it because I almost want to keep that listening experience like sacred. Okay, I take music way too fucking seriously. Do you actually like Curology? Oh my gosh, this is so funny because I was literally just going to tweet about this today. I love Curology. I've always loved Curology. I did a video like two years ago, an unsponsored video talking about Curology because I was fed up seeing like their advertisements literally all over the place. I talked about how much I like Hurology and then I recently did a sponsored video with them and now they're using clips from that video in their ads. And all of a sudden I saw so many people freaking out saying like Hiram's been bought out and I'm just like, no, I've always loved Hurology. Like I literally talk about how much I like them in every live stream. Go back years on my channel. Girl, where have you been? I don't know who started this rumor that I don't like Hurology because I always have. <laughs> but yes, I actually like Hurology. I think they're a great company. I mean, I wouldn't work with them if I didn't like them. Okay, this is from Julia. She says, if you could travel anywhere right now, where would you go? Much love. Thank you, Julia. Um, I would say, honestly, South Korea. I want to go to South Korea so badly. I was supposed to go earlier this year. It was canceled because of COVID, but honestly, looking not only at the way that they've responded to COVID, but just at the overall like technology advancements they have, not only in their society, but also for skincare, the beautiful nature, the respectful culture. I'm just like, why am I not there? <laughs> it seems like such a cool country. And honestly, I really want to go to a South Korean nightclub. I'm not a clubbing person, mostly because I feel like USA clubs are really nasty and gross, but the clubs over there seem like another level, just so cool. But honestly, I would just love to go there to like, experiment with the skincare and see all the new technology that they developed that we don't have here in the US. Okay, so Lauren says, what's one thing you don't like about living in Hawaii? <sighs> when I tell you I've had an answer prepared, <laughs> I love Hawaii. I think it's amazing. I love nearly everything about here, except for the gay community. Um, it is the most toxic gay community that I have ever experienced in my life. And I know many people who have moved here from New York. They've moved here from all over the place. And collectively, they have all told me that it is the most toxic, shallow, racist, disgusting community that they have ever experienced. And I have to say that I agree. And it's definitely like turned me off and I, I don't know what the reasoning is like I think Hawaii is absolutely incredible and the local culture here is so amazing but I will say that I never experienced like firsthand face-to-face -face unapologetic racism until I entered the Hawaii gay community before that where I grew up people would you know like try to hide their racism but here in the gay community people do not hide it it is full bone discussing racism using people's shallowness it, it's just so bad and I don't like to make a blanket statement for the entire gay community because obviously I can only speak to Hawaii and the experiences that I've had here but collectively from a lot of people I've talked to that seems to be the general consensus So I will say that's the one downside of living in Hawaii Unfortunately, but it's okay. I'm pretty much not connected with the gay community anymore and I'm totally okay with that <laughs> I do my own thing. I don't have friends. It's great. Mia says when did you discover your passion for skincare? I love you. Oh, thank you Mia. Um, so it's kind of a two-part story. I'll tell you like when I discovered my passion for cosmetics in general, I was struggling with an eating disorder. Um, I was slowly getting to a point where I was comfortable recovering, but I still couldn't find ways that I was able to see my own beauty. And my entire life, I had never once looked in the mirror and thought to myself, I'm beautiful or I'm handsome or I look good. My experience with viewing myself was only negative. I remember one day I went to Sephora because I got super sunburnt and I got like a tinted moisturizer and I brought it home and I put it on and I looked in the mirror and it was the first time in my entire life that I had ever felt beautiful. Beautiful. And it wasn't because of how I looked with makeup on, it was just the thing that unlocked my ability to see the beauty within myself. And it was just an incredible life-changing experience and I got really passionate about makeup, but I think makeup kind of capped for me because I began working as a makeup artist and working on a lot of clients who didn't want to do fun looks, but wanted to do super natural basic looks. It just kind of, I don't know, it kind of ruined the fun for me. But in that process, I was able to start learning about skincare and ingredients. And I was just amazed by just the amount of information out there. Never ending information about skincare. And to this day, I am learning new things every single day about skincare. Whereas with makeup, I didn't feel for me personally that there was as much education to pursue. And to be honest, I think that's what's hooked me in for so long. It's just the amount of learning that there is. So yeah, kind of a fun story. What was my major in college? Good question. It is the most complicated freaking answer ever. I studied international cultural studies with a primary emphasis of intercultural peace building and a secondary emphasis of anthropology and a certificate in entrepreneurship. Basically, I was studying about sustainable ways to make a positive impact on the 
world, Essence Social Entrepreneurship, which bridges the gap between nonprofit work and entrepreneurship to make sure that you're not hurting the people you're trying to help by being a toxic nonprofit, but that you're also sustainable and able to grow and not just relying solely on people's donations. While also studying methods of conflict resolution globally and locally, and learning about the complexities of anthropology through ethnography. So it was so much fun. I loved what I studied. College overall was kind of a it was an okay experience, but what I was studying was just fascinating to me. I could learn that stuff forever. Emily asks, do you have self-confidence? I actually like this question because I don't know, I think people should be expressive about this kind of stuff. To be honest, I don't. I don't think I really have any self-confidence or how I look. I do have little moments where I do feel like good or I do feel, you know, beautiful or maybe attractive once every few years. But besides that, no. And I feel like it's okay to say that. I feel like it's okay to talk about. I love the culture that we've created around self-confidence, but I feel like sometimes when I say I don't have self of confidence, people automatically feel like they're obligated to say something to boost my confidence. And while I appreciate that, I think people don't realize that self-confidence truly comes from yourself. You can have everyone telling you that you look beautiful, you look amazing, you're an incredible person, but that shit doesn't matter if you don't feel it yourself. And I've always been that way. I could have a million people telling me good things about myself, but I'm like, until I believe it, that shit's not gonna happen. <laughs> and maybe that's an unpopular opinion, I don't know. And I know a lot of times you guys grill me for my constant self-deprecating humor, but I feel like I've really accepted it and it's okay. It's okay to not feel confident. And I don't think we should be afraid of talking about that. So no, to answer your question, I do not. Oh my God. Oh my God, I cannot believe someone asked this question. This is hilarious. Okay, you know what? It is technically a skincare question, but I will respond to it. <laughs> Does cum actually help your skin? And if so, why? <laughs> um, so no, it doesn't. It can actually be kind of dehydrating and stripping to the skin. It is not meant for the skin. I do not encourage those type of facials and I will leave it at that. Oh my God, I am seeing so many questions of people asking me if I'm a top or a bottom. Guys, I'll be honest, I do it all. Just take your pick and we'll go with it, boo. I'm personally not super offended by this question because I don't really care and I don't think that we should be secretive about sex because everyone does it. It's how you came into the world, boo. But I will say, I wanna bring this up because this is a question that I get asked so often, not only online and in the real world. And it is not an appropriate question to ask most people. Think about it. Do you have random people coming up to you and asking you, what's your favorite sexual position? Like, tell me what you do with another person in your bed. Like, share the details with me. Like, every gross detail. No, that's freaking weird. So why are you asking gay people that? While I'm not personally offended by it, it is very offensive to ask that question to people unless you are on a best friend's basis. If you're not on a best friend basis, bitch, don't ask that question. It's a weird question and people should not feel obligated to respond to that. But I just wanted to say mine because people are constantly speculating over it and I'm tired of it. I'm tired. <laughs> How tall are you? Oh, okay, I'm glad someone asked this question because you guys for some reason think I'm like super short. I don't know why everyone thinks I'm like 5'2". And every time on TikTok or whatever, I show videos on my whole body, people are always like, oh my gosh, you're so much shorter than I thought. You're like tiny. I'm like, I don't care if I was tiny, but no. <laughs> my leg length is more equivalent to my torso. And also I'm not like a twig. I have a little bit of meat on my bones and I'm definitely like kind of curvy. So I think maybe that's why, I honestly don't know. I'm five foot seven. I think that's average. Maybe it's short to you. I don't know, but yeah, that's how tall I am. Okay, I'll answer a few more questions and I'll try to make them real juicy and personal. Oh, this is a good one. Um, Do you see yourself with kids one day? Absolutely. I love children so much just because I feel like they're such beacons of positivity and they're so loving. They truly know how to show like unequivocated and unconditional love and they inspire me so much to be a better person. And I really want to have kids one day because I know that there are so many orphans around the world who don't have parents who are in cycles of poverty, who will continue to be in those cycles of poverty for the rest of their life unless they're presented with opportunities for empowerment, education. And honestly, my dream is just to adopt so many kids from around the world and give them the best opportunities possible, whether it be through education, helping them grow businesses or nonprofits, or just showing them love that they have not been able to receive throughout their life. But I do wanna wait until I'm in like a really good place to be able to do that. I wanna wait until I have, you know, the time, the energy to be able to completely devote to kids. I don't think it's good to have kids when you're young and not ready because think about it, you are raising another human being that could have the potential to either be a Nelson Mandela or a Hitler. And that's all up to you. Really freaking terrifying. So for me, I want to make sure I'm in the best place possible to be able to create the best future for my children. And right now as a 24 year old YouTuber, I'm definitely not ready. <laughs> I think I might be ready when I'm like 30. I don't know. I still have to read up a lot on like childhood psychological understanding, methods of us raising a child. I know I have to go through a lot of therapy, so I'm not, you know, exerting any of my childhood drama onto my children, making sure my finances are stable enough to be able to make sure I have enough free time to devote to my children. Like there's just a lot of factors that would need to be at play for me to be ready to have kids 
kids, but yes, I definitely want to have kids so bad. I'm so excited for the day I get to have some. Ooh, Sarah asked, what's your biggest regret? That is a good question. You know, I don't really live my life with regrets. Um, I know that might sound a little cliche, um, but I truly believe that every decision I've made in my entire life has gotten me to this point, which kind of makes me not really regret anything that I've done. Like, yes, maybe there are moments where I'm like, mm, I could have done that better, or mm, I wish I would have known earlier to get out of that situation. But at the same time, I'm like, no, you know, everything had to be in place for me to be where I am right now. And I'm so grateful to be where I am, to be creating videos for you guys, helping people with their skin. And if even one thing had like changed in the past, it could have derailed everything and put me in a completely different spot. So I truly do not believe in regrets, but I definitely believe in being smart and working hard right now so that your future can be better. <laughs> I think it's good to not live with regrets, but also not be doing anything really stupid in the present so you don't have issues down the road, if that makes sense. Like we all make mistakes, but be as smart as you can. Okay, one more question. Okay, this is a good one. Kate asked, how was your life before YouTube? You know, I always like to look at my life through a very positive lens. I don't like to be negative, but I will say um, life before YouTube was really hard. Um, you know, I had been rejected by people I loved for being gay. I wasn't able to continue my education because I was completely broke. I only had 25 cents a day for food. I was working my ass off 60 hours a week. I was going through really, really dark mental health issues. I had struggled with an eating disorder, self-harm, a lot of emotional aching issues. And while yes, there were a lot of like good moments and it wasn't like completely awful. I will say I have noticed since YouTube came into my life, I am just so much of a happier person. Like I feel so grateful to be able to make this content for all of you and help you guys feel more confident. I love that I have an endless amount of things to do and projects to work on and things to build. I'm so, so, so grateful to be able to have the financial means to help other people around the world and donate to nonprofits and build projects that are gonna help even more people. And best of all, I get to wake up every day looking forward to all the things I have to do. So, you know, life since YouTube has improved so much and I'm so grateful and I don't like to talk about it very much because I get emotional. <laughs> but yes, um, even though I have so many good things in the past, I'm so grateful for my past and I think I have a wonderful, wonderful life. I am really grateful for YouTube and the opportunities that it's given me and just the overall happiness that it has brought me. And none of that would have been possible without you guys. So thank you guys so, so much. As always, like I am just so grateful for you guys, all the moments when you're sending me videos of your skincare transformations, everything. I'm just, I'm so grateful to all of you for creating this future for me. And yes, um, thank you guys for sending the questions. This was so much fun. This definitely got really personal. I was not expecting that, but that's okay. I feel like my content is so like skincare focused all the time that maybe some of you guys want to learn a little bit more about me. Who knows? Thank you all for watching. Make sure you follow me on Instagram so that you can be a part of the next Q&A. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.